Hey everyone, this is Jamie, and uh, despite having a lot of difficulties in life, and life being weird, and there's COVID, and in general people are dicks, uh, I want us to step back and remember about something great. It's Marilyn Manson's birthday. Yeah, I even have the Trent Reznor here, so, you know, you can kind of get my vibes, if you haven't yet. So, basically, um, I think you live under a rock, <laughs> if you haven't heard of him, or if you haven't heard any of the controversies. And, unfortunately, as I found out, I was talking to my brother, um, I think on the last trip, and uh, I asked him if he knew about the rib rumors, and I was like, well... There has to be a rib rumor, right? Because everyone grew up with Marilyn Manson. There's a rumor about the ribs. So, yeah, apparently it's not going on anymore. So that's that. Regardless. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out, obviously, to, <laughs> to my love for him. Regardless. Um... So he's hitting 52, and he's gone through all controversies, he's gone through everything, and yeah, like, he's probably one of the few people who you still, like, if you mention in a convo, um, you might get, like, real opposite opinions and arguments, so. I remember up to the point that I had a psychology professor, and, uh, I think he was very gay. I don't know, he, he seemed like it, and I have gay on anyway. Because I'm gay. I, I don't know if you can see it, but... It, anyway! Um, and I remember he kept saying that Marilyn Manson to him was fake. I was like, okay. Oh, well, whatever. And, uh, in general, I guess I'll, qu I'll quickly go back in time. I... I never really vibed with him, because when I grew up, it was the golden age of grotesque, so yeah, I, I would listen to it with my friends, or like, it would, like, be on, I knew who he was, I really liked his wedding photos with Dita, I liked Dita, um, so yeah, I kind of watched them, and everyone, like, saying that loved is not real, because Dita and Manson are not together, and, uh, yeah, so kind of, now that he's not as mainstream is really interesting because when a person's mainstream it's too much i think in a way that you don't get to properly assess the person and with a career like his like you can go way back and you can find everything connect the dots and etc so um besides me discovering his music properly for the first time. Um, I really got into his autobiography, which I think everyone should read. I know, I know, some people think it's too outrageous, too controversial, too everything, but it's like, you really need to like, read it diagonally to understand the meaning, and also read it, like, properly. <laughs> and, um... Like, for instance, I remember someone said that he was homophobic, and it's like, did you read the whole book? Did you? Or did you just, like, skim it out of Waterstones and then just throw it out? Anyway. So, uh... Regardless the fact that I like his music, I always, always kind of... Like everyone, you get intrigued by his image. And, um, even though you, you, you just can't not react, <laughs> because, um, even to this day, like, I remember people really kind of even argue on Reddit, um, <clears throat> or on Twitter, wherever, like, why is he still wearing makeup? And even to something as simple as, why is this 52-year-old guy wearing makeup? Or, like, why is he fat now? Or whatever. And uh, you have, like, Alice Cooper, who's still doing makeup. You have Robert Smith. You have probably every celebrity 
who goes on stage, really. Uh, so yeah, but it's always like, why is he doing that? And because the golden age of grotesque was happening, and when I was growing up, and I, I didn't vibe with it. I um, found it a bit obnoxious, a bit to overkill, and to this day, I still have not like found my entire group around it. I don't know. I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. I'm quite open-minded. But regardless, um, and in his book, uh, I think it, it starts off with discussing about his granddad, who um, basically his family kind of outcasted him because he was cross-dressing, uh, he would like lock himself up, had a collection of dildos, porn magazines, pornos, and so the whole idea was that his granddad to him was deviant, and uh, he and his cousin would rummage whatever, try to prank him, but get scared. And then, yes, I know I'm spoiling, I'm spoiling a book from 99, hooray. Um, and then the end of the book, he goes back to the cousin for a wedding, uh, back in Ohio, since he's from Ohio, and he realizes that he himself wore makeup, and he has cross-dressed, he did probably, like he said, much more fetishy uh, stuff than his granddad ever did, and in that moment he understood his granddad, and that really spoke to me, oh, as you can see. Um, personally, I don't really have, like, an example in front of me of, like, who I admire in terms of makeup or, well, I didn't at the time. And I was constantly, like, searching because I could relate to beauty gurus to some extent, but I felt like the creativity was fucking missing, you know? And sure, th there are many things I disagree with him on. But, the more I think about it, like, I don't know, I could talk about him forever, to be honest. But, the fact that he likes his makeup more because it really doesn't show that he's a redneck from Ohio uh, really spoke to me because everyone kind of doesn't like, really, men makeup. And in general, tries to push it as a feminine thing. And obviously, I have experimented with cross dressing. Hello, and uh, so has he. And in general, it's it's, it's quite an interesting thing. Um, so the whole idea of makeup making you something who you're not, or painting your whole face, specifically when you're a man. Uh, and thinking that that idea is goes way back, then I don't know. Some bitch face like James Charles. I'm sorry, I, I can't stand James Charles. Uh, putting on makeup and then going like cruising for straight man grinder, uh, grinder, Tinder. Sorry, I'm sorry. I I don't know what the the straight people use. So whatever. Uh, Tinder, yeah. And then it's like. This isn't what makeup is for. Makeup is a self-expression. Now, where does your self-expression take you? You can do it for yourself. You can do it for fun. You can do it for Halloween. But at the end of the day, you can do it just for yourself. Just to raise yourself. Like, makeup for me was an enormous outlet. And uh, I've spoken about it tremendously. And finally, finding someone who I can look up to, specifically in makeup. Yeah, sure, I don't really use this technique of using fingers. Although, this look, it was really rushed because I wanted to get the video out. Um, like, it's so strange that right now we're in this really weird society where everyone judges everyone. I think even harsher than back in the day, and um, 
to see someone stand out, even if it was in the past, it's it's better than just like I don't know. Like I don't mean to be shady, but I don't know. In the in this age, day and age, like sure, we've progressed with uh, LGBT rights. We we have uh, trans care in more much more places. It's more accessible, but. It wasn't. Like, I remember how it wasn't. I remember, um, fighting with people in Mishfest. Like, even small things like that. And all of a sudden, it's like, boop, gone. Gay men are bad. Sure. And, uh, the fact that in general, there's this whole consensus of erasing history and choosing what history you want to believe in is really fucking annoying and kind of it was really interesting because i was growing up and i would keep seeing history get erased and the closest metaphor i can think of that there's a good uh, chinese uh, game movie F farewell my concubine i'm really sorry i i struggle with that word anyway and there's a scene where the actors understand that everything is changing, therefore it's forcing art to change. And people usually bring up different regimes like, I don't know, sure you can bring up the Soviet Union for a look at, and uh, talk about how that influenced art. Yes, th there was oppression, there was this kind of need for social Propaganda, socialist propaganda, communist propaganda, war propaganda, getting people out into the front to fight Nazis. And uh, now people are like denying the Holocaust or whatever, right? And at the same time, everyone's really politicized. And I I'm also politicized, everyone is. We live in such a world that we think that we, we we have a chance to change it. And that's why, like, when I keep reading or listening to his interviews and stuff, like, the fact that he doesn't vote besides he voted once for Obama for gay marriage and generally does not vote or endorse anyone. And the fact that he's American because Americans are very politicized and they really kind of make sure to make their voice heard and seen and that their voice is the right voice, regardless of what it is. And American politics really influence everyone if you look at it carefully. Like people are gonna blame someone else, but at the end of the day it's American politics. And uh, I don't want to get too political on my channel, but it was really refreshing to see that. So I kind of agree with a lot of things he says. Obviously, there's things that he says that I don't agree with. Um, we're not the same person, obviously. Like, I'd be fucking Johnny Depp probably instead of Lindsay, but that's just... Again, this 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 is this is straight up evidence, people. Um. Oh yeah, congrats on his marriage. They're cute. So basically, I don't know. I I, I really could just sit here forever and like end up talking about myself in the end, um, because I find him so fascinating, and. I still discover many new things, and in general, I don't think talking about yourself is a bad thing, per se, specifically right now, when we're all kind of put into these categories, these boxes, and uh, like... I've been having a really rough time with dysphoria and uh, I really hope that my head just stops thinking about it, but 
I don't know when that's gonna happen, you know? And, uh... I kept reaching out, and then, at some point, I just stopped. I was like, okay, I can't do this. People <laughs> legitimately don't understand me. They don't want to put themselves in my shoes like I do for a lot of people who I talk to. So, yeah, I just went hermit. So, regardless of how hard it is, I really want something to happen at this point. <laughs> because the trans community is fighting itself. Like, the trans woman community always fought itself. The non-binary people, well, first of all, it was really, really impossible for them to get a voice in the beginning. And uh, now they're kind of everywhere in every hole i understand it in a binary um as a spectrum but sometimes it feels like there aren't enough binary voices like i'm all up for non-binary people i've seriously advocated my part like i can sleep at night <laughs> um I, I've talked about trans women, I've talked about non-binary people, I've defended non-binary people, I've defended trans women. And I've stood up for trans men as well. But, so that's why, like, when I go reach out to other trans guys, and I explain my situation, my dysphoria, the fact that I am irritated that there is nothing I can change right now to get surgeries sooner, is, is just driving me crazy. And I know I'm straying off topic, but isn't that what the human mind is? There is this really good quote in Russian. Um, Whatever is making the person ache, that's what the person will talk about. And that's what it is. So, it's kind of... Like, whenever I receive criticism of even asking or explaining my situation, and people are like, go fuck yourself, ooh, and shit like that, it's like, well, have you tried asking me what's wrong? Since you're not understanding, like, a six-paragraph essay, which I wrote explaining my dysphoria. And, uh, you yeah. know, if you don't fit in that box, like the non-binary box, the trans-binary box, no one really wants to talk to you. And then you're left in like this void. So yeah. And that's what you turn to when you get lonely and you start trying to find answers within yourself, for yourself, for music, for books, for any piece of art. And um, At the end of the day, like, I'm sure everyone has heard of Columbine and a lot of people blame Marlon Manson for it. And this is what I want to leave this video on, is what would he have done in regards to Columbine if he had known or something like that. And he said, I would have asked those kids what's happening and what's going on in their heads 
because clearly no one else did. I'm not saying I'm like, um, I'm gonna wreck havoc. I really don't want to do that. Um, I'm pretty much permitting, so. But in general, we really need to accept everyone, like for real. And it's not about ideology. Like people, people get this wrong. This is where I am like literally spelling it out. You have to accept other people with other views. You can't just say you're invalid, boom. Or like cis men bad, boom. Gay men bad, boom. Like, <sighs> Christ, it doesn't work that way. How can you say that? And you support everyone, and then have like a poster saying no men, no cis men, and it's like, what am I supposed to do? Pull my pants down to show up at the party? No. And it's really fucking me up. So yeah, um, I really, I'm grateful for him, for kind of opening my eyes to many things, and obviously I'm more political than he is, um, but, and I did rant a lot about myself, regardless, um, I really hope that I'll be okay, because at this point it just feels like, what else everyone's gonna say to me, go fuck myself? I don't need that. So, take care of yourself, accept others, accept others' political views, and happy birthday to Marilyn Manson, because he really deserves it, and he's been good. And if you fight me on that, I really don't care.